course for the election. I mean, this is just bedlam. Uh, the world financial meltdown. Sticklet says Europe's in depression, worldwide depression coming. Uh, jobless numbers down again off to the fake numbers. I mean, it's all accelerating. Tarpley, what do you say? Let's, let's talk about the October surprise. Let's talk about the CIA Mormon mafia and their plans for an October surprise to put Romney into the White House. Now, the, the first topic I'd like to talk about is Benghazi and what that shows us about what's actually happening behind the scenes in the intelligence community, not this uh, talking points, Democrats, Republicans, Obama, Romney. Then I'd like to go on to say a few words about a very important meeting in New York City on October 27th. If you're sick of Obama, sick of Romney, sick of both parties, sick of, sick of all the... Uh, you the have the floor, Dr. Tarpley of okay. Tarpley.net. And that's on October 27th, New York City. Uh, it's in Tribeca, below Canal Street. The INN World Report Auditorium uh, from noon to 6. And that will be the united front against austerity. But let me talk, first of all, about, about Benghazi. Because I think this, this is very interesting to show how the, um, the intelligence community is working in the sense that uh, the ruling elite wants Romney in the White House. The Bilderberg Group, I believe, made a decision in favor of Romney after he came to their meeting. You can see the Federal Reserve, the, uh, the, uh, the money from Wall Street. All of this is, is signaling that they want Romney. So how do they do it? Well, we've had one October surprise already, except we had it in September, and that was Benghazi. Now, there are two sides to this. One is the so-called film. The other is the killing. But these are both important, and they go together. Now, the film is not the killing, uh, and I'm not claiming that at all. But what I'm saying is there was this film, and the Islamophobic film was the subject of demonstrations in 25 countries around the world, in Cairo, in Pakistan, in countries in Europe, all over the Arab world, North Africa, you name it. This was about the film. So what's with the film? Uh, the film came out of a little studio in California, and we're asked, first of all, to believe that a guy called Sam Basile created the film. Now, Sam Basile is a little nobody. He's a patsy. He's a drug uh, ex-convict. He's probably a drug informer for the DEA or FBI or something like this. And he took the fall as the guy who created uh, the movie. But if we look at who owns the studio and who signed for the permit and actually how the movie came about, we're led to somebody called Joseph Nasrallah, who is a Coptic Christian. He's the chief, ex chief executive officer of Media for Christ. Uh, a Coptic Christian from Egypt, and it seems to me that's the guy who really made this movie come about. He's had some experience, and he has a studio to make that work. Now, if we follow him a little bit, we're led into the midst of the infamous Islamophobia network. And the Islamophobia network, people, I think, are familiar with it. It's the group that organized a demonstration and a campaign back in uh, September of 2000, uh, 2010, in uh, Ground Zero, right, in Lower Manhattan. They were the big ones campaigning that there should be no mosque and no Islamic community center. Now, Joseph Nasrallah addressed one of those demonstrations, right, that demonstration on, on September 11, 2010. This is the network that many associate with Pamela Geller, who's very vocal and very strident, and she's all over the Internet. But let me just point you, Nasrallah at that demonstration was on the program with John Bolton. Now, John Bolton is a top neocon. John Bolton is the Romney campaign. We know that Romney is surrounded by these warlike, angry neocons. We have Kagan. We have Dan Senior. We have John Bolton. We have Elliot Cohen. We have Robert Joseph, the guy who put the words in about the Niger yellow cake into the Bush State of the Union address. So there's a, there's a whole angry Islamophobic neocon faction, they want to make a comeback, they want to vindicate themselves, they're still uh, humiliated, smarting from the fact that their man Bush was, you know, leaving office with a 22 percent popularity, the lowest in modern times. They want to come back and vindicate themselves, and since they're neocons, they know only one way to do that, and that is by war. They say, we'll have a new successful war of aggression 
to make people forget about the old war of aggression. They have attached themselves to Romney. I would say if Romney wins the election, there will be U.S. military intervention in Syria by February, March, maybe when the springtime comes and the campaigning season gets better. But when you're dealing with that film, you can see all the Republicans say, no, the film doesn't matter, the film doesn't matter. Well might they say it, the Romney campaign is heavily implicated in the film. In shorthand on Twitter, we might write, the Romney campaign created the Islamophobic film that started the ball rolling all over the place. Now, when you're planning an operation like this, you need the film to create the atmosphere, right, so that people all around the world can understand uh, what's going on. But now let's switch to the specific operation to kill Ambassador Stevens. Now, unfortunately, Ambassador Stevens was heavily in contact with the terrorist elements, the uh, the Salafists, the Wahhabites. Uh, in Libya, it's called the Senussi Brotherhood uh, in that terror corridor, right? Benghazi, Derna, Tobruk. And Derna, of course, is the city that has given more suicide bombers per capita than any other city in the world. He was basically there. He had been there as vice consul before. He was... Uh, he was dealing with them in 2008, 2009. And I'm afraid part of his mission was to send these people from Libya to Turkey and then on to Syria, uh, where they are the, the heart and soul of the, uh, of the rebellion against President Assad. It's, it's precisely terrorist fighters of this type. So I'm afraid that's what he was doing. It's interesting that the last meeting that Ambassador Stevens had 8.30 in the evening on September 11th local time, he was meeting with a Turkish diplomat. Why would the U.S. ambassador to Libya be meeting with a Turkish diplomat in Benghazi, Libya? Well, if you put together what we know, it's probably the next phase of that airlift and sea lift of those fighters, those terrorists, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group and people like that, from Libya to Turkey and then across the border into Syria. So. There was every reason for Ambassador Stevens in the State Department to think that there was no threat to him because he was on such friendly terms with so many of these uh, militia elements, right, these, these jihadis. Now, if we want to ask who killed Ambassador Stevens, the answer to that, according to leaks that have been in various British papers and also in the U.S., it is a guy called Kumu. You can look it up. Q-U-M-U, or K-U-M-U, Sufyan Kumu. And his group is now called Ansar al-Sharia. They seem to be the ones who sent a well-armed team with mortars and rocket grenades and all the rest to come and kill the U.S. ambassador. Now, Kumu was in Guantanamo Bay for four years. He's an alumnus of Guantanamo. I think he's a U.S. double agent, and I think that's pretty much a prima facie uh, case. It's okay, well, that's what, just to interject here, uh, that's that, that's basically what Steve Pachinik says, and this is almost a replay of when you were on right after this happened, which is fine, but, yeah, our, but, but, but our listeners know you said that. There's more to add. Let me just continue. Kumu, mm -hmm. Kumu is a U.S. double agent, right? The way you get out of Guantanamo is by... Is by uh, by becoming a double agent for the rest of your life. Now, that's the attack. Now what's new from this past week is the defense. Now, last Wednesday, there was a hearing of the Issa Committee, Daryl Issa, California, supposedly the richest guy in the Congress. And this was addressed by a bunch of people from the State Department, although he had, he had a guy, the leadoff witness was from the Utah National Guard. Well, if he's from the Utah National Guard, I guess we can have a, some idea where he stands vis-a-vis -vis Romney, right, given the Mormon domination of the state. But that's, that's not part of the argument. What we had then was a State Department official showing a map of the, uh, of the U.S. facilities in Benghazi from above. And from above, she said, oh, and there, there were these buildings here. At a certain point, Congressman Jason Chaffetz, lo and behold, another Utah Mormon congressman, goes absolutely berserk, and he starts yelling, point of order, point of order, point of order. You can't show that picture. Take that picture down. It turned out that Chaffetz had been to Benghazi for less than one day, came back an expert, but he said that he had been instructed by everybody on the scene in Benghazi, never, never, never show that picture. And the State Department officials said, look, this is from Google. You can get this commercially. This is not classified in the least. 
And it turned out, as Dana Milbank and others reported in the Washington Post and elsewhere, that what Chaffetz was freaking out about was that there was a special CIA base at the consulate. And the consulate was supposed to be guarded by a 12-man or 12-person CIA rapid response team that would have made a very important difference in the, in the relation of forces. I hope you agree. And they had apparently gone AWOL. And as Dana Milbank wrote in the Washington Post last Thursday, it looks like that the CIA was the, uh, the organ that was letting Ambassador Stevens down. So there's one layer of security, a CIA team that was there but didn't intervene, and now the CIA is trying to cover up that they exist in the first place. Now there's another element. One of the uh, backup layers of security is the so-called 17th of February Martyrs Brigade. And they actually had a barracks in the uh, compound, just as the CIA did, pretty much. The, the uh, 17th of February Martyrs Brigade had their, uh, their barracks there, and they also ran away. They were nowhere to be found. Now, who is the 17th of February Martyrs Brigade? we got to go back so we can know them by their deeds. Last year in Libya, there was a struggle for power of the Libyan military. On the one side, you had this guy, Yunus. Yunus had been a general in the Gaddafi army. He had defected from Gaddafi in the springtime of last year, gone to Benghazi, and been made, he'd been acclaimed as the new boss of the Libyan armed forces. Okay, so he was sort of the in-country uh, candidate to be the, the dominant general. But the U.S. had sent in another guy called Khalifa Hifter, or Hafter, H-I-F-T-E-R usually, or H-A-F-T-E-R. And Hifter had uh, written in a book in French that he'd published years ago that he had been on the CIA payroll. And to underline this fact, he'd been living in Virginia, not far from CIA headquarters here in Langley. He was sent back, and he was the CIA candidate to be the head of the Libyan military. All right. At a certain point, the 17th of February Martyrs Brigade intervenes to assassinate Yunus and a couple of his colonels. So in other words, Hifter takes over the military of Libya thanks to the 17th of February CIA Martyrs Brigade. Now, to sum this all up, we have a CIA asset who kills the American ambassador. We have a CIA 12-man team who do not intervene, and we have a Mormon congressman who's trying to cover it up. And then we have the 17th of February Martyrs Brigade, another CIA asset that also declines to intervene. Just one more piece of uh, interesting evidence. The story that the whole thing was a demonstration gone violent, right? This is the whole Romney campaign now depends on refuting this story that the demonstration went violent. Well, you look on the Fox News website, and Fox News reports that four days after the event, a briefing was given to the House Intelligence Committee saying that, yes, it had been a demonstration gone violent. And the person giving that briefing was none other than General David Petraeus, General David Petraeus, the head of the CIA. So this thing has CIA written all over it. But now I would say, what CIA? What faction in the CIA that we know of, that we, we've been aware of for some time, has this existential interest in making sure that Romney gets into the White House. I say the prime suspects are the CIA Mormon Mafia. Interestingly enough, last Friday, when Hillary Clinton showed up at CSIS to give her uh, attempt to defend herself and her department... That's the big defense contractor. No, CSIS is a, is a sort of a think tank on... Uh, on uh, you know, oh, SEIC, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. This is this is this old Georgetown Center for Strategic and no, no no I know what it is I was just I've been on air a lot today go ahead Brzezinski so uh, she showed up there right to try to defend because ultimately if anybody's responsible the cabinet officer right there's such a thing as ministerial responsibility if you want to blame anybody it's Hillary Clinton but fine so she goes there and gets introduced by none other than Brett Scowcroft the Mormon former head of the National Security Council for Bush the young the elder. Bush the Elder, by the way, who got us into this whole series of ruinous Middle East wars with the first Gulf War, right, back with, back in the days of, of Saddam Hussein the first time around. So 
there is this CIA Mormon mafia, right? The young Mormons go overseas, they become missionaries, they learn a foreign language, they come back, they can put on the application, don't smoke, don't drink, don't womanize, straight arrow, clean living, and the royal road to promotions, especially when you've got an angel like Brent Scowcroft and others like him who are, uh, who are superintending this entire thing. So you look at, at all of the hot air and uh, lies and disinformation that have been purveyed in this country about this incident, and all of this stuff that I'm telling you is absolutely in the public domain. It was an, it was a, an October surprise to Carterize Obama, right? Because they're working, they're working from the original Obama printout that he's the new Carter, and they want to make sure that he gets and stays the new Carter. So they want to Carterize him, and they did it with this incident, right? With the the film, and the killing. And look at look at all those coincidences, right? This is just it's too much to be a coincidence. Somebody, some faction in the CIA clearly wanted this to happen, and now they've made it happen. Uh, and this is supposed to be, I think, the first step in trying to decide the presidential election. There may be another one, but what I'm trying to alert people to is, if you remember, Alex, when when Obama was contending for the presidency, there was this process going on in the background whereby the Brzezinski faction was seizing control of pieces of the, of the policy apparatus, right? They were taking over pieces of the, of the executive branch, even as Obama marched towards the White House, right? They were, there were things going on in the background. And I think that's what's happening right now. So people have got to wake up. Romney is the ruling class choice. Uh, they, they've, they've used Obama. They've gotten, I think they, they've gotten what they think they can out of him. His usefulness has been outlived he's a squeeze. sure that's what i'm getting from all of our inside sources uh that the system's sick of uh, obama uh and obama's up there you know running around on the stage but i mean they're all puppets to begin with and we covered this you know three four weeks ago and it's great it's very interesting but in the 25 minutes we have left here webster can we please get your take on the iran syria situation where that's going the economy all this Rather than the, you know, than, the, than the observer stuff, let me just, before we go to that, because I'll be happy to talk about that too. The other thing then is, if this is true, right? If you have Obama, which is a failure, right? It's a, it's a terrible failure. He doesn't we, get Kolob. Kolob, but Kolob has his own faction, right? Kolob is worse because the Kolob candidate comes in with this dedicated network inside the federal government that's going to do what he wants. And remember, the neocons will make a return in grand style. John Bolton, Secretary of State, based on being involved in this network that created that, that film, right, the Islamophobia film. Mike Levitt, the transition director, right, picking people even now in the background, the domestic and economic side will be this Mormon mafia on the, on the domestic side. So nobody wants this. Uh, the, the Romney Obama choice is a Hobson's choice, right? This is this. So, is do we want Obama and a bunch of bankers and commies, or do we want our precious? Uh... Well, certainly the criminal energy, right? The real fury, the 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 raving assault is on the side of Romney, because when the new administration comes in, this is always the case. The new administration comes in with with a criminal energy that the old administration, right? Here we have Obama, the effete president, with an exhausted, worn out administration and then of course you've got to ask yourself you're not picking candidates you're trying to use the election to fight the ruling class that that are that's behind the candidate i know listen and listen i understand you want to affect the election and you think obama's better than uh, romney and i know you went after obama uh, early on saying what a horrible globalist he was so i respect your your educated view on all this my only issue is i really they're, they're, it's, it's deck chairs on the titanic they're admitting global depression now What's happening with the dollar? Where do you see all that going, Webster? That's why I got you on. Here's the point. October 27th in New York. In other words, for people that have been sick of Obama, sick of Romney, people who have been betrayed by Ron Paul, people who have been betrayed by Occupy Wall Street, and a dozen other contraptions that I could mention, now's the chance to try to do something about it, right? To break out of this, you know, constant, uh, you know, pendulum, Hegelian dialectic, whatever you want to call it, of, of, you know, oscillating back and forth between 
uh, worse and, and you know, the lesser evil and the greater evil and whatever it is. And the point of this is the economic crisis is not a future event. The economic crisis is now, and it's called 30 million unemployed to start with. Sure. My point is it's worsening and coming to a uh, horrible uh, you know, new valley. Right, fine. But again, you, you, you have to look at the, uh, the, the means that have been applied, right? Why is Greece at 25% unemployment? No, I mean, they, they put them in with tax increases and austerity and cuts austerity. and benefits to implode the economy. That's the IMF oh. plan. Today, we, we have uh, Obama is already planning for the lame duck session. They're all planning for the lame duck session. It really, again, it, this is quite independent of Obama Romney, although each one of them would handle it in a stylistic Yeah, that's situation. what I'm saying. They're all puppets, man. Come on. Yes, obviously, but then what are you going to do about it? Is it enough to say they're all puppets and then our hey, job is... Hey, I don't think the public realizes how serious this is. I want to know personally where you see the economy going. I, respect I see 50 million Americans whose lives are in danger right now because those are the 50 million who have no job, they're beyond the 99, or in most states, they never even got 99. They live on food stamps. There is no, wait a minute, there's no welfare because Clinton destroyed welfare. I'm hearing reactionaries screaming about welfare. There is no welfare. It's gone. It was destroyed by Clinton in 1996 in order to get reelected. The, the reappearance of Clinton is, is really a harbinger of new betrayals, new attacks on the Social Security. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Dependency doesn't work, but I understand that when you have bankers shutting down your society and offshoring your jobs for their own monopoly, that, 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 that you have to feed people that you've taken their means to work away. I understand that. My point is the, 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 the modern great society we've seen was to domesticate and was to socially engineer. We can argue all day, but I agree with you. When they pay farmers not to produce, when they shut us down, when they turn corn into ethanol, when they spend $22 billion to ship General Motors to China, I don't want to hear about a woman getting food stamps to feed her kids being the reason we have problems. I, I, I understand that these people okay. will starve to death if they don't have that. I understand we are literally, when they pull the trigger on this, it'll take weeks to turn this country into a rioting wasteland. Yes, and, and again, uh, people, are un people are educated about Obama. I wrote two books. You, you've been uh, distributing them, right? That's that's a wonderful thing. So people have some idea of Obama. In the case of Romney, they don't know. I, by the way, I, I have to urge people, go to progressivepress.com, progressivepress.com, and, and buy this book, right? Buy it as soon as you can. You can get it for as little as $6, and, and uh, I think that's a, that's a no-brainer. But now, we're already, we, we've got a gang of 12 in the Senate, and here's what they're saying, that the fiscal cliff is coming and the lame duck session, and it's time for the grand bargain. And the grand bargain is supposed to be to avoid the defense cuts by cutting the food stamp budget. Now, this is where we get into genocide. No, I had Congressman Walter Jones on, a serious, you know, conservative guy. He said we should end all these wars and take care of people. Obviously, you want to get the economy going, you take care of people. You don't keep the wars going, they're bleeding us dry. Right. And I'm, I'm, but, of course, th the problem is that neither party has any interest in, in doing this. Uh, the only way, the only way. Well, to where is the de where are the defense contractors going to get all their contracts if the country fully collapses? The ruling class is incapable of thinking that far down the road. This is always the the, the fast buck, the quick rip off, and so forth. So there, it's it's it, it's impossible to make an appeal even to enlighten self interest to these people. Right? You can say if you do this, the Chinese will eat you for lunch. They don't care. They they can't. They can't fathom it. They're like, like I'll just move to China. Stuff. They've got great investments. I'll move to Singapore. Yeah, and Mitt, Mitt Romney, um, you know, certainly already has his uh, his, his. He's already put there. his eggs in the Chinese basket. But now, look, you take a couple of cases, right? And I would urge you to take up some of these issues, right? Benton Harbor, Michigan. Benton Harbor, Michigan, on the you know, it's on the on the west uh, west side of uh, the mitten. Benton Harbor, Michigan, is under dictatorship. By the fascist governor of of Michigan, Snyder, right? He's put a, 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 a essentially a little dictator, a little Hitler, is running that city. And there are other cities in in Detroit that are in the same way. We just had the Chicago teachers strike; they were sold out by Obama. We had the struggle in in Wisconsin, 
of the Wisconsin public employees trying to stop the fascist governor Walker, who's of course a big friend of Paul Ryan, uh, the the John Birch Society freak, who's uh, uh, Romney's uh, running mate. Um, the, the Chicago teachers' strike was almost going to be joined by the Service Employees International Union. You almost had the the kind of um, critical mass you would have needed for a statewide Illinois and maybe Midwest-wide general strike. This is what we have to start thinking about. The problem with all those struggles is they're too narrow. If it's union only, it won't work, right? It's got to be black community, unemployed, women, other elements. You've got to have something to say to the troops to get them on your side so they're not on the other side. In other words, the mass strike approach and a program. And generally speaking, in all of these struggles where you're fighting either to uh, get a, a decent wages for a public uh, union or to roll back uh, layoffs, firings in the public sector, or you're trying to maintain a service like an education or something else, it's the Wall Street sales tax. And this is what, what Occupy Wall Street never, they never fathomed. It's not enough to protest Wall Street. The key is to make Wall Street pay. Take it out of their hide. Make them pay. We have a depression. You're saying people people finally realize it's a depression. It's been a depression for more than four years now. Who Who's going to pay for this depression? Romney and company say, yeah, you are. You're working people. And the finance oligarchs are going to make out like bandits. There's got to be a way to say no to that. And it's a very simple thing. Wall Street sales tax. You pay sales tax on shoes. In some states, you even pay it on food at the grocery store. The Wall Street sales tax, 1% on quadrillions of turnover. A wealth tax is not going to do it. It's not enough wealth. And uh, Glass-Steagall is a fine idea, but that's not a mass organizing demand. That's not a, a leading edge sort of mass traction, life or death kitchen table solution to, to this kind of stuff. So I urge people, turn away from both of them. Obama, I've said everything I can about Obama, two books. That's about it. And it's basically all in there. Nothing has been added, really, that I can see. And now Romney, it's the same story, except it's even more sinister. And then you've got this uh, white horse prophecy, right? You're asking about Russia, Iran, places like this. How can you have a president who comes from a so-called church where they were swearing a blood vendetta, a blood revenge oath, against the United States into the late 1920s, meaning George Romney, presidential candidate, father of the current one, swore to exact blood revenge against the United States and against the American people for the way they treated Joseph Smith and Hiram Smith, that they didn't bow down and then a, a mob came and killed them. And then on top of that, that's the oath of vengeance. Then we have the White Horse prophecy where we've got this apocalyptic scenario that the Constitution hangs by a thread, the Mormons take over the United States, they go on and conquer the world, and the last battle is with Russia. And I take it that's that's behind this otherwise mystifying statement from Romney that Russia is the main strategic foe of the United States. If you want to get on that trade, people have forgotten Bush, right? Bush, they asked Bush, you know, do you talk to your father? He said, no, but I talk to the higher father, right, meaning his direct line to God. He told French President Chirac, uh, I'm doing this to destroy the enemies of God's chosen people in the Middle East. This is insane stuff, but that's bad enough. Now what we have with, with Romney is a codified version, which is much more binding and uh, I think is, is more frightening than anything we had with, with Bush the Younger. So people have got to think about this. So what we're going to need is a line of defense. There's got to be a defense line sometime in now in November. There's got to be the, some kind of a rudimentary line of defense, class defense, right, on the basis of these sorts of economic demands so that when the assault comes, at least we can put out a propaganda demand saying tax Wall Street, Wall Street sales tax, make the bankers pay. And if you're not doing that, I mean, people that are not doing that who think they're fighting Wall Street or the elite or the finance oligarchs or the 1% the or the New World Order, uh, it's it's not going to not going to be adequate. In other words, people have to prepare. You well, Webster, sure. sure, sure. I mean, I'm not fighting people that are 1%. I'm fighting the tiny elite who are anti-free market monopoly people who brag they want to shut down the middle class. 
That's the problem with the so-called general left. They just want little tiny things and don't understand the larger image, you know, of what can bring true freedom and an empowerment, a new renaissance, a new enlightenment. And, I mean, I just see two incredibly corrupt power structures that are all interconnected and uh, things running but, down. I mean, I don't, I don't see the, an even deeper... But how about the survival needs of the American people? I'm telling you, there are 50 million people no job, no unemployment benefits, they have no health care. No, I got it. And they'll no vote to take my guns anything. and take my house and line me and my family up and shoot us in a ditch if it means they'll get an Obama phone. And so, you've got, no, look, the other thing is unions, right? You've got, there's got to be some pre-organized element in this stuff. Now, Romney and Ron Paul and Rand Paul are all on the same line. Bust every union in the United States. Bust them all. all right, let me just stop you, Webster, because I've had you going on and on. I just want to say something. I'm all for the unions that stood up against the Rockefellers 100 years ago, 60, 70 years ago. Now they're just mafia organizations that lobby to ship the jobs overseas and, 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 and give their money to Handgun Control Inc. to try to take my guns. So, I mean, what do you say to the Obama phone lady who says, I got an Obama phone. In fact, we have the clip ready. I'm going to play this for you. What do you say to this lady? Here it is. Obama. You, you got Obama phone? Yes. Everybody in Cleveland, low minority, got Obama phone. Got Keep phone Obama phone? in president, you know? He what? gave us a phone. He gave you he a phone. Do more. How do he give you a phone? You, you sign up. If you're, you on full stamps, you on Social Security, you got low income, you disability. Hey, I'm you I'm okay, what's wrong with Romney again? Romney, he sucks. Bad. Bad. So there you go. I mean, that, hey, I mean, Alex, I, yeah. What is that? The ghost, the ghost of Breitbart? Is that the Republican national? So I'm not community? allowed to go see what people that have, yeah, uh, all they, they, they want is for welfare. It's absolutely trivial. Uh, that's absurd. That's a that's peanuts. It's chicken feed. It's nothing. You know how many how many Obama phones Jamie Dimon at, at J.P. Morgan Chase got? Pandit the Bandit is now quitting. You know much how much he got from the federal government? It's in the trillions. Hey, it's you're not you're not listening, uh, uh, Webster. I, I listen. I had Greg Palast on today. All I've talked about is the trillions to foreign bankers and corporate welfare, and I just said it's wrong to demonize someone because they're getting food stamps when you've deindustrialized them by design because you don't want to have a, a, a complex, uh, diverse market. You know, as, as John D. Rockefeller said, competition is a sin. All I know is, is and what I'm going to say is, the 100 million people on welfare of one form or not also happen to think Mao Zedong's a great guy because I've talked to him. They think Lenin's great. They think my guns are bad. They they just buy whatever the disgusting udders of the New World Order spray into their mouths and disease their brains with. So I don't like the banksters, but I'm down here on the ground with people that would probably hang me up by my ankles and chop me up for barbecue if the New World Order told them it was liberal. You know, a bunch of abortion-loving, eugenics-loving, black genocide-loving, New World Order, fake liberal, limousine liberal trash who are also my enemy. But it's, you understand? It's I don't like the neocons and all their... Cr the whole ruling class is a bunch of rotting carcasses, and then so they've got giant hordes of dumbed-down idiots following them. So what's the basis to fight the ruling class? I don't you know. Can turn on, you can turn on Larry Kudlow on CNBC every night and he says free market capitalism is the blah, 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 blah. free market is their slogan it's the slogan of john but they D. only say that because they don't really follow it they want monopolies there there is no such thing that's the other thing is that the free market has not existed since the hey hey hey, hey hey i don't get tax incentives in travis county but every globalist corporation pays zero tax and i went down to the city and they said they laughed at me because i'm an american scum right so there's, and the, by the way, with the Mormons, you're a Gentile and a damned American too. So don't forget them. But the the what does that even is, mean? I don't. I'm, I'm a well. What a Mormon is a Gentile. What the Mormons? The Mormons consider everybody else, even including Jews, which is which is quite remarkable. The Mormons consider everybody else a Gentile. And you read their documents, you know, from the 19th century, from the founders, from Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. Hey, but I the get the whole Mormon thing that you're using politically, but the Mormons today are not the it, Mormons of 100 years ago. I, look, I, and I say this to your listeners, I warned about Obama. I think this turned out to be right. I use the same method to tell you that Romney is coming at you and you better be ready. And I'm trying to warn people that this is going to be horrendous. And it's going to be beyond Obama because it's a different. Well, that's scary. I hope you're. Approach. You know what? I hope you're wrong, buddy. And the answer. I'm not saying you know support any lesser evil. I'm saying 
organize independently, independently of the ruling class. Okay, can I just have five minutes here at the end with you for, for, for my questions? I know you want solutions, and we've talked about those. I understand what you're saying. What them. is your real prognosis on the current course uh, for the economy and Syria, Iran, the proxy wars? It looks like it's building towards a head. Well, again, I, I would say the principal danger in the world economy is that uh, we do have this depression, and uh, the ruling class is determined to bring this sort of Greek or Spanish or British, because they are not too far behind, to bring that austerity to the United States. And if you want to do that, uh, again, Romney is, is a more suitable vehicle than, than Obama, because Obama's got to worry about some of these constituency groups. And they love austerity because everybody can be bought cheap then. Because they are obsessed, um, they want to save all that money. Uh, some of them want to use it directly for their own wealth. Others want to use it for bailouts and corporate uh, welfare. Now, concerning Syria, this is always uh, uh, of some interest. Uh, right now, the the word on the ground in Syria is that the uh, the Syrian army is actually winning, that the free Syrian army, so-called, the killers, the people, a lot of them are Libyans who were brought from Benghazi over to Turkey and then into Syria. They've had heavy losses, and the, the Syrian army has been doing better and better against them. I think we've gotten to a point now where, at least in cities, the free Syrian army, the killers, death squads, cannot really hold on to anything in a city. They may be able to hold on to things in the countryside in northern Syria near the Syrian border, say north of of Aleppo and in this um, Idlib area. They can do a few things there, but that's about all they can do. So now we've got um, the, the call had gone out. And this was actually right before Ambassador Stevens got killed. The call went out for a second wave of, uh, of jihadis to be shipped in. And undoubtedly, northern Libya was a key place for that to happen. So it, it's not clear to me what has happened with that with that. Uh, particular um, echelon, right, that they wanted they wanted to send in. So uh, the, the Syrian army is doing better, uh, and there's, you know, the, you get freakouts going in, in, uh, in the NATO circles. The free Syrian army has split into three groups, and they don't coordinate. They There are 300 death squads. That was always true. But now the 300 death squads, instead of at least being under the nominal leadership of this guy, Major Assad. They're now going three different directions. One of them is a uh, very obvious uh, Saudi puppet, I would say, a, a Sunni sort of Wahhabite uh, preacher. Now, where, where might this end? Well, on the one side, it looks to me like there is some perspective that the, uh, the, the gorillas, the killers, will be reduced to a mm, sort of low to medium level guerrilla war. They, they've tried offensives, right? They had one offensive a little bit after the middle of But now July. they're saying no fly zones, boots on the ground, this, this, uh, this, invasions. This is, a, there's always a question, right? Suppose Obama thinks he's losing the election. You could also have, uh, up to now I've been talking about Romney's, uh, you know, the Romney network, pro-Romney network, and what they might do as an October surprise. It's also possible that Obama would carry out uh, some kind of an October surprise, because when you get very close to the election, the the uh, the uh, uh, effect that people have observed is the so-called rally round effect. That uh, if it happens a month or two before the elections, uh, there's plenty of time for the various attack machines to generate anti-Obama sentiment. But if it happens right before the election, the immediate uh, sort of Pavlovian response of the American people is to support the president no matter who he is, right? To rally around the president. So that might be something in uh, in Obama's quiver when we get close close to the elections. The other thing, though, is I, I think one perspective is that the Syrian army simply grinds down these death squads, and we may get it. We may be getting to the point where there are not enough death squads left in the Middle East to keep this going because the Syrian so army. So they may be running out and exhausting all the Al Qaeda jihadis that the West is right. funding. All yeah. right, uh, Webster Tarbley.net. Uh, thank the you. Other, the other okay. The just the other thing is you might if you get a revolution in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, or Qatar, that would also tend to shut down what those people are doing through Turkey into into Syria. Or uh, Erdogan of Turkey may come to his senses 
and say, look, I've gone all the way out on the limb. Obama's been lying to me. The CIA has been lying to me. Uh, there is no perspective for overthrowing Assad in the medium, short to medium run. I'm going to cool it. I'm going to butt out. I'm going to pull Yeah, but back. they seem to be committed. Webster, we'll talk to you again very soon about this particular topic. Thank you so much. We're going to go to break here and play this special report on the UN Agenda 21 and how it mirrors the Chinese authoritarian system. Well, of course it does. The Rockefellers in the 70s made a deal. This has been declassified for China to be the model. They're going to have you live in 250 square foot. Now, Bloomberg's announced this uh, facility.